So hi everyone, my name is Alyssa and I'm the founder of RateHub.ca. Uh, thanks so much to Dev Tio for having me here this evening. I'm super excited to chat with you guys. Originally, can you be louder? Okay. So originally I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about customer acquisition, but I thought um, maybe I should go one step before and talk to you about the RateHub funding story. Um, and I think it's because, because of the reason that we bootstrapped um, it's why we're so obsessed with customer acquisition. It's how we funded our company and so we've had to be. So to kick things off tonight, I wanted to give you a brief overview of what exactly RateHub does. So we're Canada's leading financial product comparison website and we help users find the lowest mortgage rates, compare and find the best credit cards, or find the highest GIC rates. And just over a year ago, we also launched a mortgage brokerage. So some of our users, we actually take right through the funding process and help them get mortgages in Canada. So this is a, a brief screenshot of our experience. So if you come to our website, you can quickly see mortgage rates sorted from lowest to highest. And if you want to connect with a, with a mortgage broker, you just fill in a, a simple lead form, so name, phone number, email address, and submit that right to the broker. And this is the first way that we make money at RateHub. So we make a fixed fee regardless of whether or not a mortgage closes to every lead that we send to a mortgage broker. Since we've been able to, over the years, amass quite a large following in Canada, our traffic numbers are fairly significant, and so we also earn money by selling banner ads to many of the big banks in Canada. And then finally, more recently, as I mentioned, we launched our mortgage brokerage, and so we earn about $3,000 for every Canadian that we're able to place in a mortgage. So that gives you a little bit of an overview of the company, how we earn money, etc. Um, but to take you back to the beginning, it was 2009, and I had spent two years uh, in a management consulting, a very corporate role, and I decided that uh, it just wasn't my passion. And, and so I decided that I was going to leave, didn't know exactly what I was going to do next, and I sat down for a, a nice meal with one of my classmates. And he'd spent the last two years working at a mortgage brokerage, um, and our conversation started to get exciting when he told me that they were buying online leads from a site and spending about $20,000 a month. Um, and so, you know, you can imagine our conversation. So all we need is a website and we just put some mortgage rates up and we'll earn $20,000 a month. I mean, great. Three months later, we'll be sipping with us on the beach and, and we'll be retired. Um, and obviously, it, uh, it, it never works like that. But I think from that initial conversation, I was so excited because you know, there were a few fundamentals. There was only one competitor in Canada at the time, um, and there was a very simple and straightforward business model that I could understand. Um, but I actually just booked a plane ticket to Hawaii, and I was going for two months to totally decompress um, and shed the corporate life. So it was actually, I, I landed, I bought a van for $1,000, which you can see uh, uh, to the right, um, and I got a job working at this hostel. Um, and it was actually from there that I pulled together my first pitch deck. Uh, I found a development shop that would, would actually build the first iteration of RateHub. Um, and I actually pitched my first investors from a payphone in the hostel. Uh, and I actually, you know, preparing for the presentation, I went back and found the first pitch deck that I had put together. Um, you can see that the project was called Canada Rate Saver, uh, Mortgage Rate Comparison, November 2009. Um, and it pulled together a snapshot of, you know, this, this slide was just the competitors in the market. I think my favorite slide, though, was uh, our initial set of projections. So you'll see that by year five, we would hit an astounding $300,000 of revenue. Um, and throughout those five years, I'd only ever factored in salaries for myself, um, which obviously, uh, it obviously hasn't been the case. And when I look at this, it's actually surprising that I was able to raise any funding at all. Um, but when I left Hawaii, uh, I convinced three people to give me $25,000. So I was at $75,000. I threw in uh, an extra $25,000, um, and that got us through the first year of business. So when we ended, I, I got back to Toronto in January of 2010, and when we, end, um, when we ended that first year, we'd, um, we had the website launched, we found our, our CTO, um, and a lot of really exciting things were happening. So now it's 2015. Um, and when we look back, this is how we've actually funded the company. So through three major sources, we, we raised money from angels, 
Uh, we complemented that with grant funding. Uh, but by far the biggest source of our revenue has been, um, sorry, the biggest source of our funding has been our customers or our revenue. So angel funding. Um, so you can see that uh, in the first bar in 2010, that's that initial $100,000 that went in. Um, and then the green is, is topped up sweat equity. So myself and our CTO, you know, took reduced salaries and then put it back into the company. Um, but what I think is important to look at with this story is that um, it was key that we found angels that had the ability to put in more capital and were committed to the idea. Because um, I think for most companies, you're always going to need more funding. Um, and so it's, you know, 100000 for my first business seemed like a lot, um, but with so much opportunity, we wanted to keep investing in the company. We wanted money to hire um, more and more employees and team members to grow. The next one is grant funding. So I think if you're thinking about a startup or you already have a startup in Canada, you can't ignore grant funding. Um, we've and we've been uh, able to collect funding from you know Shred is a has been great. IRAP has been another awesome one. Um, the youth employment program. So when we onboard recent grads, we're able to, especially if they're engineers, we're able to get an initial 15 to 20k to, to start, and that that's really helpful to grow the team. Uh, so then the final source um, from our customers revenue, and and as I mentioned, it's it's by far been the biggest source and the source that we're most proud of. And I think that one of the advantages to bootstrapping is that it forces you to focus on your business model. It forces you to think about revenue uh, because that's what's gonna keep the lights on and that's what's gonna ensure that you're building the right business. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons that I became so pas passionate about customer acquisition is because it was so important uh, to the success of our business. Um, so I wanted to talk, I wanted to end the talk by uh, going into a little bit of detail about the major, the major ways that we have acquired customers. Um, so this is Rate Hub's traffic over time. Um, and if you look at the first blue section, so the biggest source of our traffic is from organic searches within Google. So when people go to Google and type things like compare mortgage rates or best five year fixed or you know the thousands of different keywords that they search when looking for mortgages. The second um, is branded search. So people either looking for RateHub in Google or going and typing RateHub.ca. And that's something that definitely grew over time and is really the, the result of all of our efforts from search to social to PR. That's, uh, that's where that comes in. The next, the, the black is referral, so other websites linking to us. And the amount at the top, the gray, is paid search. So what's exciting here is that the significant majority of our traffic comes from non-paid sources. And that's something that we really worked on over time. Um, you can't see as much in 2010, uh, times weren't as exciting, but um, one thing, we paid a lot more for traffic in the beginning, um, and that's pretty standard. You know, if you, if you are working on a company um, that can be search driven, so there's a lot of customers going online looking for your product, um, I definitely, I mean, you have to invest in organic, but you can start with paid search um, before you get traction. Um, so, a little bit more about paid search. As I mentioned, mentioned, the advantage is you can acquire traffic instantly. I remember the day that Rate Hub went live and, um, you know, we turned on our AdWords campaigns and we were getting our first set of conversions on that first day. Um, and there's truly no other way to just turn on uh, that traffic. You can define success and track and measure very accurately. So. I just wanted to give you guys a quick snapshot of um, the, the AdWords flow. So you can start by using Google's keyword tool and you can type in a search term and Google will tell you exactly how many people search that each month. So this was an example, I was looking at best mortgage rates and it was a pretty popular search at about 15,000 searches a month. And then we just designed this ad so that anyone who searched best mortgage rates would see this very targeted ad. 
If you guys, I mean, many of you are probably familiar with paid search. If you're not, um, this is an example of a search engine results page. So you can see that the users typed in the keyword. Here are all of the organic results. And then to the top and to the right are the paid search results. And so that is what you can impact the day that you launch your campaigns. The important thing is testing. You know, can you drive conversions from these ads? So. This is an example of our thank you page. Anyone who fills out a lead form on Rehub sees this thank you page, and that lets us know that we've earned our, uh, we've had a conversion and we've earned our lead fee. So then you can go into Google AdWords and set up your goal. So I can say, anyone who sees this URL, rehub.ca slash thank you, that means that Rehub's had a conversion and it's earned its $65. Um, at the time, we were charging 50 leads, so you can actually put in the goal value, so you can start to determine are you, you know, how much money are you making from your AdWords campaigns, and is it profitable? Um, this is an example, so you can see the date July 21st to 31st, so a little over our first month, and in that time, we were able to um, attract 5,000 users to our website through these paid search campaigns, so it was really exciting to see. But even more important, we were able to see the number of leads, so how many people were actually completing our forms based on which keywords. And so this was really valuable to us because it showed us which keywords were gonna drive a lot of revenue for us um, and the type of volumes that we could expect. And so we were able to take this list and then target all of our search engine optimization efforts to specifically go after those keywords. Um, so. These are some of the keywords that today we rank number one for, um, and we were able to do that by focusing on search ranking factors. Um, so I didn't want to get into too much detail tonight, but at a really high level, um, there's, it splits into two major areas. So for search engine optimization, you've got on-page factors and off-page factors. On-page factors are things like making really clean and obvious URLs for your users, making sure your page titles, your H1 headers, your meta descriptions, um, are optimized, making sure that the page has relevant keywords and content on it. Um, and then Google is more and more looking to try to measure strong user experience so they can infer based on time on site or the bounce rate of the specific user if they're having a valuable and positive experience with your website. And then probably the most important, um, or the differentiator, because it's, it's quite easy to get your on-page factors right, it's really about off-page. Um, and so that's focusing on trying to get as many inbound links into your website. Google really looks to see, you know, are other companies talking about this website? Have the media companies in Canada linked to this website? Um, that helps them determine how high quality the product is. And other brand factors like, you know, they'll look at social accounts, how many employees the company might have on LinkedIn, um, and how many people search for that brand each month in Google. So um, for us, it happened to be that um, search was going to be very important for us. We started with paid campaigns and then moved into more organic campaigns. Um, but I think for you guys, if you're, you know, again, starting businesses or thinking about them, um, it's really important to figure out what is going to drive customer acquisition for you and what are your success metrics going to be um, and focus all of your efforts on those in the first few years. Uh, and things will really pay off. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Would you rather go to AdWords or would you rather go to the Facebook advertising? It's interesting. So the question was AdWords versus Facebook. Um, Okay, so let's talk about some of the differences. What's so amazing about Google and AdWords is that the intent is there. So if someone is gonna search best five-year fixed mortgage rates, that is, I literally couldn't think of a better customer, um, and they're sitting right there. The problem is, um, because that's so good, it's very competitive, and so the cost per click has gone up significantly. Facebook you know, has an incredible audience size, and so if you spend the time to optimize your campaigns and target your audiences to figure out you know, who you should go after. There can be results there. Um, we're, we're experimenting with Facebook a lot for our credit card vertical and we're starting to see positive results, but it takes a significant amount of time and it hasn't achieved 
um, the scale that AdWords has. But I also think it, it really depends on your business and what works uh, for RateHub might be very different. So I think that Facebook, it has a large audience, you can get low cost per click. So um, if you think your target audience is there, I mean, the, the great thing about these is that you can track absolutely everything. You know, at the end of a week, you should be able to say how much revenue you earned or how many users you acquired and what the cost of your user acquisition is. Um, so I think if you can really track it, you just have to test a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. Um, in 2010, at what point did you feel comfortable with the platform you guys had to start paying for it? Like, so well, okay, so the question was, uh, in 2010, at what point were we confident enough to start paying? So, again, our business model may be a little bit unique in that the day we launched our website, we had paid providers, so brokers were listing on the platform and it had committed to paying per lead. Um, so from day one, I was able to launch AdWords campaigns. I made sure my cost per acquisition was below the $65 per lead, um, and I was able to monetize those from day one. Um, so that might be, again, like if you're, if you're doing something that is more venture funded um, and you don't have a specific monetization plan or you might monetize at scale, um, then I think maybe, you know, speaking to other people in similar industries and figuring out, you know, what is realistic for you for the cost per acquisition and set a benchmark in your head and then try to measure everything to that benchmark. Um, yeah, again, ours had, a, we had a very specific $65 per lead you have to try to figure out what your number is. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Like, uh, you raised, uh, your revenue was around seven point four million, and you had to raise six point, like six hundred fifty k. Like, the numbers don't add up. Like, what was the what was the reason you had raised? Uh, what do you mean when you say the numbers don't add up? So seven point four million in revenue, and after that, that was like. Uh, uh, like all these innovation based revenue, so quite a bit of profit, I'm assuming. But still, you had to raise 650k. So I think though, if you, if you, more? so good question. Why did we raise if if, if we're profitable? Um, we weren't in the first few years. So if you look, you know, a significant portion of that revenue is concentrated in the more recent years. And so, um, in the first few years, I think the first six months we launched our revenue was twenty five thousand dollars. So that's not going to pay for you know, multiple developers, multiple marketing, and a team that you need to get to a significant revenue. And so that's, you know, normally a, a good test for raising. Um, does it allow you to scale and get to a profitable point that you couldn't necessarily get to on your own? Yeah. What would I do differently? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's so hard. I, I I think now looking back, I can see that if we had have raised even more money, we might have been able to move faster and get into, you know, we're just going to launch insurance in the next in the new year. Um, but if we had funding, maybe we could have done that three years ago and then, you know, already have acquired market share. The only issue is it's easy to say that now that we know how to acquire, acquire customers, we've refined our business model. And so now, Scaling's comfortable. I wonder if we had have had a lot of capital in the beginning before we had everything fine-tuned, if we might have overspent um, or not been as focused on the things that were going to drive success. But yeah, to, to raise or to not raise is always a, a very interesting question. Really feel any effects of the recession? I think that um, residential lending, so for you know individuals with very high credit scores buying in uh, major cities, banks were still willing to give them mortgages, so we didn't feel that. Um, I think it's interesting now we're in a period of incredibly low interest rates, and so mortgages you know are very popular. The housing market is booming, and so. Um, you know, it is important to think about what if interest rates increased, would there be as many Canadians getting mortgages and trying to um, do what we can to assess those risks and manage them now. Um, but in the beginning, um, we didn't feel the effects of, of the credit crisis. Yeah. Uh, 
So Google has. Um, so the question was, if they're using things like bounce rate and time on site, how are they getting that information? They have a, and I'm not incredibly technical, so this is how I understand it. But they have many spiders that are crawling all websites. Um, but I guess yeah, for the consumer data, I guess it would be other like Google users that are signed in or um, are using Chrome and their platform to search and then infer the results. Okay, should we take one more? Myself? Okay, I have the mic so I want to hear the question. Sorry about that. So, um, backtrack. Last year at DevTO, we had uh, one of our more popular talks and it was called No Country for Old Developers. And some of you guys might remember that one. And, um, it kind of came to mind because um, you mentioned that uh, you know some of the help that you got along the way were grants to hire young developers coming right out of school. Now with that being said, where would you have drawn the line between experience and being able to get a developer at a lower cost than having an experienced developer who might be, you know, 10, 15 years deep, but is going to also cost you a bunch of money. That's a really great question. So, hmm. I think so. Some grants are for recent grads, but a lot of grants are for technical projects, and so then depend. You know, it doesn't matter how recently they graduated. Um, we always look at it, you know, we want the best candidate, so it's more through an interview process. If someone comes up that we notice is a recent grad and we were going to hire them, then we'll look at funding. I think we, you know, we always make the decision of who's the best person on the team and we've, of course, hired many people that we're not able to get grant funding for. Um, but I think I don't, you know, right now on our credit card vertical, we're going to bring on an intern and take advantage of co-op programs because you can get some money back from the government. Um, and in that specific case, we've decided that you know we just need manpower and we want it at a more affordable rate and the government can come in and help subsidize. And so in that case, we're only looking at co-op students. Um, but it, it sort of depends, you know, what stage of the company, what do you need in that role. Um, but on the development side, we, we usually go, you know, best candidate. Thank you. Do you want, I, I'm happy to stay around and, and chat. Thank you guys. Thank you. Awesome.